Just on your wrist of plain giant. You guys know that I'm a huge pro-life ad ad um, mm -hmm. advocate. Mm -hmm. I saw where she was advocating for poor women of color to have access to abortion. And I think for me, it just kind of irks my soul because we never hear them say, we want to make sure that white women have access to abortion or we want to make sure that poor, let's just be honest here for a second. We never they, hear that. They do say and poor. And I've been, I've been, they say poor women of color. And I've been, poor that poor women of co I've been that poor woman of color. I've been a convicted felon. I had to raise five children on my own. And I mean, they're all blessings. And I just think that, us as black leaders, we know that there is strength in numbers, mm -hmm. and instead of advocating for us to sacrifice our children at the abortion mills, I think that we should focus more on ways to prevent pregnancy so we don't have to keep aborting our children. It's important as... for us to build our numbers okay. back up. Let me, Chris, be, let me be clear. As a black woman, I, I don't, I'm not offended that you say you don't abort our children. That's I'd Be clear, I am pro-choice, and mm -hmm. I believe any woman has the right to decide whether or not she chooses to carry a pregnancy forward, period. No matter mm -hmm. race, whatever you are, mm -hmm. you should decide. Mm -hmm. The reason why abortion for poor women and, and specifically African American women has been an issue is because we were denied that for many years. When, whether, when, I mean, when were black me, women ever denied? No, I want please, you to speak factual. When were I, black I, women I, ever denied can abortion? I, can I finish my sentence? Because that's the only thing we've black ever black done for free. Sentence. No, we weren't. So we were denied. Abortion was illegal for many women and definitely mm -hmm. for poor Before women. Before 1974, access. Title X funding was specifically Ooh. for poor women so to have abortion. Pro so Angela, so I mean, let's just let her make a point. Let her make a point. So that's what I'm point. saying again. Poor women are more impacted by illegal abortions, which is why when it became illegal, that was a big thing. We were impacted in terms of dying from illegal abortions, abortions more right. than anybody. Poor women. Back so alley the whole, So plan. to have the access to abortion is important. Whether you choose to abort your child or not is a personal choice absolutely. that you should be able to have. I'm absolutely pro-choice, but getting back onto the, the debate... The let me finish. We're not talking about not abortion. Pregnant, no, let's, let's, yeah, let's, and also, you guys, I pregnant. think we should be able to, like, honestly, I think, Christine, a, you should be able to say your point, and just as you introduce Angela, you should be able to say your point. But we don't have to roll our eyes or sink down in our seats and do things like Stacey, that. Stacey, you just stormed off the stage crying because she said something about My your perception mother. on marriage. No, 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 no. Let's get this clear. Eyes. No, no, no. She said something about my mother and what you don't no, know you is... said something about no, she, your mother. No, no, no. She, she just she agreed said with what you said. She said, oh, so now I know because your mother was married five times. Well, you said it. So we're no. not, we're not going to go back yeah, to the conversation yeah. about your mother because I yeah. think we all know that I didn't mean anything by that. And as it Mothers relates to... As it Your relates opinion to opinions abortion and abortions different. and everybody having different perspectives, <laughs> I think that is what makes us all amazing. The fact that we have our own individual minds and we can make our own decisions based on our own experiences. Woo child, if that wasn't a shady clip that made me go to the bush and weep, do you hear what I'm saying? This clip was very shady, it was interesting, and I want to know how you feel about it down below, right? And look, if you don't know who the woman is on the right, that is Angela Stanton King. She is a very opinionated political figure, a black woman, an advocate, and an activist, and she is a Republican and a Trump supporter, but if you know her, if you've ever seen any of her YouTube videos, if you follow her YouTube channel, or seen her anywhere else you know she is very opinionated and very headstrong so I want to get the conversation started and I figured that this would be the perfect opportunity because I, I did get a couple of cackles in off of this clip again because it's infused with shade and there is some shock value packed in there right but there is a more serious conversation to be had with regards to the subject matter of the discussion here which is Roe versus Wade this is a very polarizing discussion that is taking place on social media and and beyond and in real life and I recommend that you check in on your mental health if you haven't already you have no business dibbling and dabbling into this controversial and potentially divisive conversation unless you've tackled your own spiritual warfare and your invisible issues okay y'all know I press that in every video and I also press you to think critically and independently regardless of what you hear from me or anybody else okay as you hit thumbs up, keep in mind, this is a very laid back approach to me leaving my two cents and adding my contribution to the discussion about my body, my choice and Roe versus Wade. As a black woman and as a bearer of life, I'm gonna start it off like this. My thought process is no one's beliefs should trump someone else's autonomy over their own body. 
Two things can be true at one time. You can be pro-life and also feel like my body, my choice. And to Angela Stanton King's point about free abortions being specifically offered to or advertised and black people being targeted with free abortions, right? The pressure that is implied there. I can't say that I disagree with that fact. When I take a look into my Rolodex, right? And I vaguely just go over my memory. I've never studied, you know, abortion commercials or paid attention to that, but I don't have anything readily available to really refute that fact, right? And I respect Angela Stan King. I don't agree with everything that she says, but I still respect her. And you can respect someone without agreeing with everything that they say. So free abortions being specifically offered to black people, I wouldn't say that that's necessarily harmful. Is it a trend? Yes. Uh, or a dual mechanism for targeted population control? Absolutely. I, I could agree with that. However, you know, all pregnancies are not consensual. But there's a plethora of other reasons why women should be able to govern their bodies outside of non-consensual pregnancies. But these types of decisions shouldn't be made by Congress. They shouldn't be made by local governments. And that choice shouldn't be revoked based upon someone else's belief or moral compass. But more importantly, we are also subjected to more harm as black women and especially young black women of sexual misconduct and sexual violence. And in fact, according to data from a study done where the purpose was to examine racial or ethnic disparities and being forced to have sexual intercourse against one's will and the effect of substance use on these disparities, African-American is the ethnicity with the highest prevalence of having been forced to have sexual intercourse at 11.2%. And African-Americans are more likely to use drugs at 44.3%, according to this study. And the conclusion between these two pieces of data, and according to this study, is that substance abuse is one of the many contributing factors to sexual violence. And future studies should explore the cultural and other roots of the racial differences in substance use behavior as a step towards developing targeted interventions to prevent unwanted sexual experiences. So in order to do all that, we got to go back to the root and study drug abuse and the many different ways that non-black people have oppressed and plotted to weaken and overpower us black folk over time. So we're talking about going back and, and studying slavery and beyond, which is something that's been done time and time again. And not to say that we should stop studying. However, when we talk about sexual violence, we talk about the contributing factors. A lot of the things that contribute to sexual violence when it pertains to the black population and black women a lot of that stuff is out of our control and it's built into a system that really needs to be dismantled before we can make any change it's not as simple as just abolishing the legality behind abortions and while some women may agree and they may share the belief that the bill should be stricken down and that it should be left up to individual states whether to make abortions legal or not it's ultimately men and white men specifically who are in these high ranking positions and are making these decisions about women's bodies and, and for me and my people, black women's bodies. <laughs> Listen, men should not have power over women's bodies. And, and why would I want a white man to have power over my black body? <laughs> it's not making no sense to me. Ultimately, my final point is that eliminating legal abortions in any of the 50 United States will not stop abortions in said place. It'll only remove safe abortions. In other words, it will encourage people to go to basements and alleys to get abortions instead of being able to have the option to get a safe legal abortion. I know this is a highly controversial topic, but like I said, this is a space that I curated to be more relaxed, not tense. Let's talk about it. Let's keep it sticky, real, and respectful down below in the comment section and have a dialogue about this. Do you agree or do you disagree? Happy Thursday. I hope that y'all have an amazing day. Okay, stickies. I appreciate each and every one of you. Consider subscribing if you enjoyed my presentation or what I got to say over here on my channel. You definitely want to make sure you hit that notification bell so that y'all always know 
notified when I'm dishing out some of this breaking black news, the celebrity updates, and y'all know I keep my finger on the pulse, okay? Tag me in your favorite trending topics on Instagram and on Twitter. I'm gonna catch y'all in the next video. Y'all stay beautiful, black, and blessed. Until then, all right? The plain is Jane. This is one of my favorite comments here. She says, I love me some black, and she said, loves me some <laughs> black news. She says, is it just me, or does anyone else get tired of seeing people that don't look like them delivering info about them day in and day out? But that's it. If you want to catch more of my commentary on black culture or vital and trending information, be sure to subscribe by hitting that little circle in the middle of the screen, or I'll catch you in one of these rectangles to the right in another video. I'll see you there.